Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us here this morning for our Bible study. And uh, we're going to find Revelation chapter 7 is where we're going to have our Bible study here today in just a few minutes. And uh, we do have another drawing today. And so today we're going to do things just a little bit differently. And uh, so we'll do that at the end after the Bible study as well. And uh, I just am very, very excited about, um, about meeting again at the church property here as, uh, as the evenings get a little bit cooler. And I'll give you more details about it. Um, I've, we've got some things in, in progress and process right now to help facilitate with that. Um, but I believe it's going to be a great it's going to be a great time, and I'm looking forward to seeing everybody uh, once again for our uh, for our evening service that we'll hold here on the property. It's not going to be um, not going to be this week, and um, but we'll we'll see what God does. Lord willing, uh, you you keep your ear to the ground for that announcement. We'll meet on uh, on the property here again very soon. Lord willing, very excited about that. Revelation chapter number seven. Starting in verse number one, the Bible says, And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth that, blow, uh, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the sea and the, the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed. And there were sealed 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Verses 5 through 8 describe that it's 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes for 144,000. Picking up in verse number 9, he says, After this I beheld and lo a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne and about the elders and, of the, and the four beasts and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which, uh, what are, these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto, her, unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple, and he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, uh, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for this day. I thank you, Lord, for this passage of Scripture that you've given to us. And Lord, I pray that you'd give us wisdom today as we study your word. And Father, I pray that you'd be honored and glorified by our lives. Lord, help us to just calm our hearts and our, and our minds here for these next few moments as we look into your word, that you would give us wisdom and understanding as we, con uh, as we consider the truths of your word here for these next few moments. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Now, we're, we're taking an interesting turn here. If you remember, last week we studied chapter number 6, and we looked at the seals. There's a great scroll and it was held in in places by seals. And as the scroll unrolled, there were seals that were broken. The Bible tells us there were seven seals, and we got through six of them. And, uh, and so now we would expect Revelation 7-1 to be the seventh seal. Uh, but instead, we have this kind of interlude. Uh, what is going on here? So we have this very interesting break here in the discussion of the seals, where... Um, where we don't see the fulfillment of them. We don't see the, the seventh one. We talked about the first six. And, uh, and so where's the seventh? So this chapter here comes to fulfill many Old Testament prophecies and, uh, and uh, of the, the missionary work of uh, the Jewish remnant and the, 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 the turning of many righteous 
uh, of the turning of many to righteousness during this time of tribulation. Um, and it's an interesting break. It's a very important break. So in the Old Testament, it was, uh, it was foretold basically that, that God would once again deal with his, child, with his people, the children of Israel, at some point in the future. Um, and for instance, Habakkuk 3.2 says this, O Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make known. In wrath, remember mercy. In wrath, remember mercy. This is, um, and as we talked about last week, right? One of my beliefs uh, that that um, that that the church will be raptured out prior to these events um, is is kind of bolstered here by what by what we read God is now turning his attention back to Israel his chosen people and so in his wrath he's pouring out and these these seals are just the beginning um, of him pouring out his wrath upon the earth and um, and so even in this wrath remember mercy remember remember mercy and that's what we have here. It, this, this part of the, this, this break is so very important, this interlude is so very important that we understand the heart of God, the mind of God, during the, midst of this, during the midst of this time, as troubling as it is for us to wrap our mind around and, and to understand. This comes after the great earthquake of chapter 6, verse 12. And we know... That now, and this was a this was a global earthquake. Mountains were moved, islands were broken off and cast into the sea. That's how that's how drastic this earthquake is and traumatic this earthquake is. That earthquake in chapter six and verse number twelve, uh, in accordance with the sixth seal. And so there was it was no you know right now we would call an earthquake or a hurricane, or a tornado, or what some of these events, we call them a natural disaster. And uh, covered in the media, such were these, these natural disasters. My friends, this earthquake in 612 is a supernatural event. It's not a natural disaster. It's a supernatural event. And so now that it's obvious, it has become obvious that God is beginning to, to pour out His wrath upon the earth. You say, well, how, how do you know that? Well, the we're told that in chapter 6 by the people experiencing it. Remember, John has been invited to heaven to view all of these things. And some of the things that he's viewing are taking place in heaven. Some of the things that he's viewing are taking place down on earth within the construct of time. And, uh, and so we're kind of jumping back and forth based on where John is looking. John looks down right now and there's this great earthquake. Let me write about that. And then he turns around and says, what's going on in heaven right now? Let's write about that. When John looks down and sees this terrible earthquake happen, he notes for us the response of the people. Look at verse 15. The kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the chief captains, and the mighty men of every bondman and every freeman hid themselves in the dens and the rocks of the mountains, said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us, hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come. Now there is always a talk of these natural disasters and how awful it is and how terrible it is. I don't know of anyone experiencing a natural disaster that said, this is God's wrath on us, kill me now. now there might be some people who, who, have, who have said that. But my friends, that will be the common thought of the day. John here records for us, it's, it's everyone, the, the kings, it, it, it's, it's become, the wrath of God now has become the great equalizer upon the earth. The great kings, the great men, men of valor, mighty men, along with all of the others, bondmen, slaves, free men, uh, middle class, Everyone is begging for God to spare them. They know that this is the wrath of God. They know that God is pouring out his wrath on the earth. 
And so now it's become obvious. Now it's not it's not just a speculation. We get that every uh, every time there's an earthquake as well. You know, last time there's an earthquake in San Francisco, oh, this is God's God's wrath out on that. No, it's not. And we haven't seen anything yet. We have not seen anything yet. So in the midst of this pouring out of wrath, that's where we have this break, this interlude. God, don't forget to be merciful. And he does. He is merciful. God continues to be merciful and to continue offering salvation. He continues to offer salvation even during the midst of, his pour, of the pouring out of his wrath upon the earth. What an amazing God we have. Now you say, well, oh, that's, that's fine. I can just, uh, then I, I know what I'll do if salvation's still offered. I'll just wait till all of these events start happening. That way I'll just know and I'll get saved real quick because God will, God will have mercy on me. Well, as we see it here, there, there are two groups that I believe are represented here. Um, those who have been, who have arrived after the beginning of these troubles or were deceived until, uh, until the beginning of these troubles or perhaps even did not, or were ignorant before the beginning of these troubles. And now they are able to receive the, to receive the Lord Jesus to acknowledge him as their Savior. Now remember, in the Old Testament, God dealt mainly with his chosen people, Israel. But there were some Gentiles along the way to, to uh, put their faith in God, and God had mercy on them. And, and we see that throughout. In fact, even Nineveh, a, 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 a pagan society, uh, saw one great revival before they turned their back on God once again. And so we see, so even in the last days, we'll see God working with Israel once again. And then along the way, uh, f there, there is room for, for others to experience his grace during this time and his mercy during this time. It's just an incredible thought. But that's just one group. The other group um, that I believe are represented here are those who refused the Lord Jesus before this time begins. And their fate, I believe, is already sealed up. So why, why do you say that? Uh, why don't you find Hebrews chapter number 4? I keep your spot here in Revelation. We'll be right back. But in Hebrews chapter number 4, um, we, we see these first 11 verses here. And it's kind of a disjointed passage. kind of jumps back and forth a little bit. So you really have to put your thinking cap on and think through some of the phrasing. All right? To connect the dots of what he's saying. Um, Hebrews chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. So, now, let's pause here, right? The book of Hebrews written to the Hebrews, the Jews, right? I hope you answered that out loud in your living room right now, all right? Um, the book of Hebrews written to Hebrews, written to Jews. And so he's addressing them, uh, he's addressing this people group um, specifically. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. So he knows that there's a promise of rest for Israel. For unto us was the gospel preached, as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So what he's saying is... It, the, the, the gospel's gone out to the Gentiles, and if we fall short, it will be because of a lack of faith, not because of a lack of hearing, not because of a lack of preaching. It will be because of a lack of faith. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he said. As I have sworn in my wrath, if they have, shall enter into my rest, although their, the works were finished from the foundation of the world. So even though this is all said and done, they can enter into his rest. And this is what we're seeing take place today right now during the church age. Verse 4, For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. Seeing therefore it remaineth, 
that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Again, he limiteth a certain day, saying, saying in David, Today, after, a long, uh, after so long a time, as it, as it is said, Today, if you will enter, excuse me, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. For if Jesus had given them rest, then we would not afterward have spoken of another day. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that has entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works as God did from his. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. Whew, that was a lot. I know. But if you're following this, this is what he's saying. He's saying, I'm going to, I'm going to give the Israel rest, permanent rest, if they will have faith in me. But I'm also going to, because there is coming a day of rest. Now, there is coming another day afterward. Now, if there was no afterward, he wouldn't have said afterward. But there is coming a day afterward where he, they will allow again to, to enter into this rest. And so this, I believe is exactly what he's talking about. God shifting his focus during this tribulation time, specific seven-year tribulation time, to work again and focus his attention on Israel specifically. To again offer to them his salvation. And it's not that anybody who's a Jew cannot be saved right now. They most certainly can. But the majority have rejected the Lord Jesus. And so we, we will see this turn again where God turns his attention to them. But what does he say about those who are already in unbelief? They're in unbelief. My friend, listen to me very carefully. If you today, no matter what day this is for you watching this video, hearing my voice, if today you've not placed your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you can today. But as soon as these events begin to take place, your eyes will be blinded, your heart will be hardened, you have, your decision will have been made. That's it for you. We must trust in the Lord Jesus today, while there is time today. If you're hearing of his voice now, harden not your hearts. Today, hear his voice. Be sure that you choose God right now. If you wait, my friend, it could be too late. It could be too late. Let's look at those who are involved in this. The Jews, God's chosen people. God turns his attention back to Israel. Now, back to chapter uh, Revelation chapter number 7. All right, back to Revelation chapter number 7. We see here very specifically, there will be God chose, choosing 144,000 Jews. He seals them with a seal, a sign, a, sig a signal or a symbol on their forehead. Uh, these Jews, it's a definite number, and he goes, it spends verses 5, 6, 7, and 8 in painstaking detail describing 12,000 from each and every tribe of Israel. Now, today, right now, those who are Jews have no idea what tribe they originate from. When in AD 70, Jerusalem was, <clears throat> excuse me, Jerusalem was overtaken, the temple was destroyed. Since that time, it's been impossible to trace heritage back to the tribe. And so now, and today, this is what you have. You have these, you have one of two... Uh, different positions. I gotta let you go through very quickly, right? Um, one, a couple positions. Number one, you have the scoffers who are saying, "Nobody knows what tribe of Israel they're from, so this obviously cannot be even true. We should disregard all of the Book of Revelation because this it, this is not possible." You have you have a second theory. This is where um, the Jehovah's Witnesses come from. This is Revelation chapter 7, upon which their theology is based, where they say this is a spiritual ascribing. So it's not literal tribes of Israel. It's, it's God choosing 
144,000 to do his work during this time could be anybody. I want it to be me. Because I want to do I want to be one of the special ones that's chosen to do God's work. Um neither of those are correct. What we have is John listing for us of the tribe of Judah, 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed, 12,000. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed, 12,000. Of the tribe of Asher were sealed, 12,000. On and on and on. Every single specific tribe, 12,000. Well, how are we going to know? Well, I have news for you. It's God. God knows. And my friends, God does not need for us to take a DNA test to determine who, uh, who, who everybody is. God is not going to come down and go, oh man, I know we wrote that, John, but remember what happened in 70? I, ugh, I, I had my back turned for like just a minute and I lost all the records. <laughs> God's not lost anything. God hasn't, God's not going to deal with this this way. He's, God doesn't need this DNA test to determine. He tells us that he will seal up 12,000 from each and every tribe of Israel. There will be 12,000 from each and every tribe of Israel sealed to do his work during this time of tribulation. And the results are going to be amazing. Now, Lord willing, my time is out. Lord willing, we'll come back to this tonight or this afternoon, and we'll finish up this uh, study here in Revelation chapter 7. Because the results are, a, the results are something you, you, won't wanna, you're, you're, you don't want to pass up. It's amazing what God is doing here during these last days. Now, my friends, again, everything that we see around us, everything that we are experiencing today is ramping up toward these events. I don't believe that these are the things that we're looking at right now today. But everything that we are looking at ramps up towards. God is orchestrating all of these events. Everything is lined up already. He has everything in place. These things must happen in order to fulfill everything that God is saying is going to happen. So for us today, we can just trust it. We can trust God. He's in control. He's in charge. He knows what he's doing. He knows who it involves, and he knows specifically. He knows every single person. He knows all 144,000 of these that will be sealed on this day. He knows them by name. And he's prepared. He's ready. The question is, are you? Are you ready? Have you made Jesus the Lord of your life? Have you asked Jesus to come into your heart to save you, to rule your life? Have you submitted to him for salvation? Have you asked him to forgive your sin? You can do that today. Father, we thank you so much for your word. And Lord, I pray that you would help us today. I pray that if there's one here listening, watching the video today, and they don't know you as Savior, they've not trusted you, oh, Lord, I pray that you would, uh, that you would help them in their faith. I pray, Lord, that they would pray to you, confessing their sin to you. I pray, Lord, that they would uh, re renounce their sin, that they would repent from it, and that they would, they would just simply ask you to be the Lord of their life, the ruler of their heart, their decision maker and their king. Oh, Lord, I pray that you would be honored and glorified by the things that are decided, the things that are done here today. Lord, we love you. We look forward to further study. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. All right. I have, we do have another drawing. All right. And I have all of the tickets that are here. All right. Now, nobody called in to claim their prize from last week. So, what we are going to do is we are going to take all of the tickets right here and we are going to combine them all. So, all of these tickets being combined into here. So, that was all the church kids and, uh, and all of the bus boys tickets right here being combined into this bag here with the bus girls. Now, now I've got to really mix this up, all right? And I'm trying to get it to where you can see it a little bit better. All right? So I am just I am just shuffling these things around, all right? And uh, just trying to make it so that 
I can just reach in here and pick a uh, pick a winning ticket, one that's going to call in. Now listen, if your ticket is if your ticket number is called, you've got to call Brother Climber. You've got to call him, send him a text message, and say yes, my ticket was was uh, was selected. Now listen, if right now you don't have your ticket anymore, pause the video right now. Pause the video. Call or text Brother Climber and tell him. Uh, I don't, I'm watching the video, I've lost my ticket, I don't know my ticket number, can you get my ticket number before he, before I watch him uh, pull the, pull the winning ticket, all right, and, uh, and you just, uh, we'll see what he does, all right, uh, it might be a surprise for him to have anybody call, all right, so, uh, so you do that, if you, uh, if you have, if you've lost your ticket, you threw it away, whatever, um, be sure to uh, be sure to get your ticket number. All right, I think these are pretty well, pretty well shuffled. I'm not sure why I'm doing this because it's not actually shuffling them. It's just moving them around a little bit. All right, but I am going to choose a ticket right here. I have one. Now I have two. I have one. Now I have one. All right, and so I want to uh, I want to call this um, this number right here. It is 5271101. Now listen, if this is your ticket number, you call Brother Climber. If you don't call or text Brother Climber by Wednesday, guess what? Your ticket gets put in the other bag and we do the drawing again next week. I've got a backpack, it's gotta be given away. So call, text him, let us know, all right? Now, Lord willing, we'll meet again this afternoon right here on YouTube. There'll be another video posted for a Bible study this afternoon. We'll finish up here, Lord willing, Revelation chapter number seven. After that, we have a Bible study on Wednesday night, and then after that, uh, we'll be right back here next Sunday morning, okay? All right, that's our plan. That's our schedule, and uh, God, God willing, that's what uh, that's what we have planned to do. All right. Until next time, my friends. God bless you. Have a good afternoon.